dementia. And it's a complicated area because there are two main dementia terms and what I'm going to try and give you today is an understanding of which one is appropriate for which setting. So there's dementia with Lewy bodies and there's Parkinson's disease dementia. Um, you might regard them as the same thing, but they are subtly different. Uh, and as a definition, uh, dementia with Lewy bodies is dementia within the first year of presentation. Uh, there may be no motoric Parkinsonian symptoms at all. Um, they may emerge later or they may never emerge. Whereas Parkinson's disease dementia is more of the normal continuum of Parkinson's disease, so patients have to have a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease first, and generally the dementia component only comes quite late in the onset of that condition. Now the prevalence of Parkinson's disease dementia is very high. I'm going to show you some data from the Sydney cohort concerning this. Uh, but roughly it approaches about 80% uh, of people uh, above the age of 80 who've had Parkinson's for a number of years. So, you know, it's, it's a terrible burden. We also know from biomarker analysis. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with <laughs> biomarkers in Alzheimer's, but a long A beta, uh, which is deposited <clears throat> in the amyloid plaques of uh, Alzheimer's dementia, the levels of it in the CSF drop, as one would expect if it's deposited in the brain parenchyma. Uh, well, we see a similar marker for amyloid occurring in uh, dementia with Lewy bodies, and it does appear to have an, uh, an amyloid Alzheimer flavor, which I'll detail further in due course. And that's another thing that helps differentiate dementia with Lewy bodies from Parkinson's disease dementia. Although synuclein, which is one of the main proteins involved in Parkinson's, uh, is deposited in both conditions and is reduced in the CSF in both. Uh, epidermal growth factor, which I'm sure all of you measure in your elderly population, has a predictive accuracy in Parkinson's disease dementia, apparently. Uh, there are isolated MRI case reports about cortical atrophy being more present in dementia with Lewy bodies. But a lot of other scans show absolutely no difference between these two entities. So if you do uh, a SPECT scan of the brain, and I'll show you some examples of those, uh, you see posterior at the back of the brain, hypoperfusion in both conditions. Uh, MIBG SPECT, which looks at the autonomic innovation of the heart, is abnormal in both entities. A DAT scan, which looks at dopamine transporter uh, levels, I guess, in the striatum, is abnormal in both. The neuropsychological profile of both is similar, although one would say that all of the things in this paragraph are commoner in the Lewy body presentation, where visual hallucinosis is very characteristic, delusional thought disorder might occur, and there are problems uh, both frontally uh, and in the visuospatial part of the brain. Uh, and because of the definition, the way we define these disorders, one would expect motoric symptomatology and signs to be far more prevalent in Parkinson's disease dementia, because remember, these people have got to dementia via Parkinson's, uh, whereas in Lewy body disease it might not be present at all, which can make the diagnosis difficult. Now, one of the proposals for why it doesn't make sense is that uh, dementia with Lewy bodies is not pure Parkinson's dementia, and that amyloid plays a very important role, and perhaps it should be viewed as a subset of Alzheimer's. And there is some emerging evidence for this. I've given you the biomarker evidence that A-beta 1 to 42 is reduced in the CSF of DLB patients as it is in Alzheimer patients. And following that uh, line of thought, if we actually look at amyloid in the brain, which we can do now with imaging investigations, this is an old study using Pittsburgh VE compound. Uh, but many of, we, of you will know that amivid, which is a SPECT, Tracer has uh, well is about to be released uh, in the UK, and will offer the same kind of imaging for a lot less money and without a cyclotron. Either of these techniques manages to do in vivo staining uh, through imaging of amyloid, and if you do that in DLB, you see a very heavy 
amyloid load as you would in Alzheimer's. So DLB really does seem to be something very different, a very different beast.